Hello, the internet. My name is Isaac from Fictional Reality Media, and today I'm going to be showing you this uh, Blender tutorial for how to create this cool uh, kind of mirrored abstract fractal effect in Blender. Um, it's really cool. There's a lot of different directions you could take this tutorial. Um, this is one of the images I created. Uh, this is another one, and then this one is the one we're going to be making in the tutorial today. Uh, so. Follow along and let's get started. All right, so here's one I just made. Um, actually, it turned out really cool. I, I like this one. Um, but you can see up here that the scene we're using and setting up is it's very, very simple. So let's start up a new Blender file and I'll show you how I did this. All right, so to start off, we already have almost everything we need. We have camera cube and our lamp. All we need is a sphere and maybe a couple more lamps if we'd like. Uh, before we do any of that, uh, one thing we need to do is change the render engine from EV if you're using the beta version. Uh, change it to cycles. And then you can use CPU or GPU rendering. I'm just going to stick with CPU because I'm recording at the same time and that can slow things down. Anyway, uh, and then uh, da -da -da -da. what I'm going to do, uh, we need to change the light paths here. Um, change all of these to zero except for glossy and the total and then change the light clamping turn that off and turn off glossy filtering um, just we, because we want all of this just to have great reflections so we don't want to limit that in any way um, I like to turn up the glossy all the way and then this total will will clamp it at the level I need to um, usually I set it to about 20, but I'll show you what that does in a, in a minute here. Alright, so the first thing we need to do is uh, change, we want to change to wireframe mode just so we can see what's inside of our cube because everything is going to be taking place inside of this cube. Next we want to select our camera, push Alt G and Alt R just to reset the location and rotation and move it up to almost the top of our cube. Not not quite. All right, then the same thing with our lamp. Alt G and then we want to move this one down to the bottom. And then the important step for doing this um, we want to go over to our light settings options and change the size from 0.1. We want to change that to about 10. Uh, this will just soften in the reflections a lot and give us a overall better result. Next thing we want to do is add in an icosphere. You can use a UV sphere, but I like I like icospheres for doing this. Change to about eight subdivisions just so it's nice and smooth. With W, change from change to smooth shading. Then scale this down a little bit. I'm gonna pull up the timeline and change this to 3D viewport, and then click zero on the number pad to change to camera view. And next, you want to change the overlay to um, what is that? Ren render preview. That's it. <laughs> All right. So uh, your screen should be black. Um, if it's not, you've probably done something wrong. So to make it look cool, what we want to do is we want to change the shader and material settings. So if we select our cube here, um, it should have a default material already applied. Um, you want to use the principled shader. So what we want to do is uh, increase the metallic value all the way to 1 and the roughness value all the way to 0. Then select the sphere and select the same material and you can see there you have uh, the beginnings of a super cool pattern thing. I'm not not exactly sure what you'd call this. I don't know if it's a fractal pattern or or what it is. Um, anyway, anyway, I like to click uh, control B and just border select just the camera view to help it render a bit faster. Let's go back to our light and we can change the strength to uh, maybe a thousand. Um, all this is just, the rest of this is just making it look cool and it's completely up to you what you do from here on out. Uh, so that that already looks pretty cool as it is. Um, you can change the you can change the size of the light to change how sharp you want everything. Uh, but the smaller you get it, the harder it is to make out the details. So I like to keep them. I like to keep it bigger. 
Um, anyway, I usually do about about ten. I guess we could go. We could go with five. That looks that looks alright. If you want to to just get more colors in here, um, what we do is we just duplicate the lamp and move it around. Um, we can move it just straight up a little bit. Maybe give it a nice blue. That looks cool. Uh, duplicate it again, move it along let's say the Y axis, and then maybe give it some orange. It's not bad. Maybe let's select this first one and change that down to about 500. There we go. And then duplicate it again. Uh, move it over there. Let's see what looks cool. Ooh, maybe a darker blue. There we go. That looks that's that's not bad. Not not the best pattern. Um, but just basically play around with that until you get a pattern that you like. Um, really, it's it's whatever you think looks cool. Oops. And you can you can also change the size of the sphere as well. Um, just to change the effects, you can you can throw other objects into the scene as well so like I could duplicate the sphere scale it down move it over here and I uh, can't really see it too well but it's it's there anyway you can you can put anything you want into this scene and it'll it'll reflect it really cool um, anyway yeah so that's it for this tutorial uh, if, if you liked it press the like button subscribe to my channel for more cool blender tutorials um, and I'd love to see what you guys do with this. So um, I'm going to put a link to my Instagram in the description. You can follow me and then post whatever it is you make on there and just tag me in it. I'd, I'd love to see it. Um, yeah, so uh, that's, that's it for this video. I hope you all have great success. If you have any questions or comments, um, leave them in the comment section below or send me an email. Uh, my email, I'll put that in the description as well, or you can just visit my website and leave a comment there. Uh, thanks, and I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.